Hey guys, welcome to another episode of VTech Academy. You're about to get school. We are here with part four of Project Backmarker. And we're getting ready to put the motor in, but we've got to do a few things to the motor first. One of them is make a new wiring harness for it. Now, the 88 to 91 Civic came in kind of two flavors. It came as a dual point injection and came as port injection. Port injection is what we're going to need for our new ZC motor. That means each individual port has an injector. And one of the things that uh, went along with that is there suddenly became a new sensor in the distributor called the Top Dead Center Sensor. <laughs> And technically, on a ZC motor, that new sensor is on another, it's on the uh, exhaust cam on the front of the engine, but if you had an SI, it would be actually inside the SI distributor. Now, we need to add that wiring to our harness, but we also need to add it back to the computer. So what I've got right now is when we were doing the relooming earlier, I actually put a wire through the harness back to where the ECU is that we're going to use to kind of pull through the other four wires we're adding. So we're going to be adding uh, two new injector wires because the dual point injection that used to be in here had two injector wires. Plus we're going to be adding the TDC sensor. Uh, and I'm sorry, that's not TDC sensor. It's technically the number one cylinder sensor. It uses that to synchronize the injectors actually. We're also going to be adding the wiring for the number one cylinder sensor. So those four wires will get pulled through and we need to kind of determine what link they are. Uh, so what I've done is put a piece of wire in that's actually too long. I'm going to mark it, pull it through, measure uh, how far it is to the computer, and then I'm going to go back to where it's coming out in the engine bay, measure where the plug's going to be, then I'm going to pull the wire back through and that's going to give me the length of the wires that I need to feed through there. Way back in June 2002, I actually did an article on this very subject for Sport Compact Car. Uh, obviously, you guys aren't gonna have that information, so I'm gonna go ahead and give you a chart of what we did on the website. So if you wanna go to vtechacademy.com, you can get a little sheet that kind of tells you where everything's gonna go. Uh, now, the two wires that are currently inside the harness for the dual point injection are a red wire and a yellow wire. Those just happen to be the color of wires that go on the third injector and the fourth injector. Uh, unfortunately, they're not in the right place to do that, but we can change that, it's no big deal. Uh, I am gonna run two new wires and I'm gonna keep them the same color. That helps them with troubleshooting if I ha ever have problems down the road. So I'm, I'm going to be adding a brown wire and a light blue wire. Now, on the TDC sensor, <laughs> <laughs> you need to have the yellow wire in the correct place and the, uh, I'm sorry, the blue yellow wire in the correct place and the blue green wire in the correct place. If they get switched, it actually changes the peak of the signal, which is what the ECU is looking for, and it'll actually cause a problem with the timing and you can throw a distributor code. So it's going to be important that we make sure that we get that stuff in the correct location. And with that, uh, the color coding helps us out tremendously. I actually pulled two wires through. This uh, green or black white wire I'm, I'm going to use to pull all the OBD1 stuff because eventually we're going to do OBD1 on this because we need that in order to be able to tune the ECU. Uh, but initially we're going to run it with an OBD0 so I need to do the uh, multiport injection conversion. So this yellow wire is the one that I ran for that specifically. I'm going to come down here. I have a lot of slack on this thing by the way. So I'm going to peel it out here. And I'm going to put a little mark on it right here. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get inside the car and I'm going to pull this through until it gets to the correct length for the ECU plugs. And once I do that, I'm going to come back out here, take my slack, and measure how far it needs to go to there, and that'll tell me how much wire I need. So 
we got our mark pulled in all the way to the ECU plugs. The A plug was the one that was farthest away, so I made sure it reached to that. Now I'm going to come up here and go to the same length here. All right. Let's pull it back out and see how much what our length is. Right there. The next step is to go ahead and put the terminals on the end of this. Now, I'm going to be using this bracket right here to attach the new connector, and it has a little uh, slide on piece that the connector can lock onto. In order to do that, on this particular side, the male, pin, the male connector is going to have to be on the engine side of the harness. So, on the cabin side of the harness, we're going to do female, a female connector. So, that means female terminals. I have here some terminals. By the way, if you're interested in purchasing these new, uh, there will be a link down in the uh, notes, in the YouTube notes right below this video. You can click on that and get them. These particular ones were bought from cycleterminal.com. They also happen to sell the connectors. Uh, so I will leave a, uh, I'll leave a link in the show notes for you on that. Uh, also, the tools I have are pretty interesting. Uh, a set of high quality wire strippers, I uh, got those on Amazon. These are my favorite strippers. Uh, they work really well on the small gauge wires we have. And this is my new favorite set of crimpers. These are IWIS. Uh, the model is uh, 1424B. Uh, it has kind of an interesting feel. It has three different sizes of crimps for the different sizes of wires. And then it also has seal crimps. You don't usually find those on a lot of crimpers. A lot of the crimpers I use don't have seal crimps. And basically what those do is they'll crimp in a circle so they don't go in and uh, do, I forget what it's called, a C, C crimp or whatever, the one where they roll the crimp in there. Uh, that particular one tends to uh, kind of rip through the insulators. Uh, but uh, these are really nice. Uh, it took me a long time to find them, uh, but uh, I'll leave a link to those as well. By the way, if you use our link, it comes from our Amazon affiliate page, and uh, any uh, thing you purchase, a small percentage of that goes to VTech Academy, and that just helps us buy more parts on Amazon when we need them for a car. So if you're not familiar with how to crimp, let me give you a, a quick little uh, primer on that. So. Uh, you know, and I always do this, it's, it's actually best to put the insulator on before you strip it. And the reason is, is sometimes one of the wires will get caught on the rubber insulator and stick out the side and poke you in the finger. Uh, but anyway, uh, first thing you do is uh, you're going to strip a little piece. You need enough there that it can totally go past the part that's crimping. See how, if you look at that, when I roll this crimp on here, the wire will actually stick out past the part that's being crimped, which is right, which it's that part right there. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to use the middle size crimper on this because of the size of the wire. Crimp it down really good. There's a little bit of wire sticking out. I'm going to give it a good hard pull, and I mean hard pull to make sure it's on there all the way. Then I'm going to pull my insulator back just a smidgen and use the crimp. Just like Honda does. Alright, three to go. So I put the uh, male side of the plug up here into the clip and went ahead and made sure everything was the proper length to reach up here nicely. Uh, everything is going to fit really good. I just need to loom it up. But if you notice here, I've actually got to plug this a little bit bigger than I need. This is an 8-pin plug. I only really added four wires. 
I am going to, in the future, do an OBD1 conversion on this car. And because of that, I went ahead and ran four more wires. Now, these wires are for VTEC solenoid, for NOx sensor, for VTEC oil pressure, and for the secondary O2's heater control. Um, these wires are totally necessary if you live in an area where you have to have a carb legal car, and let's say you're doing a B16 out of a 94 Del Sol uh, VTEC or uh, B18C out of a GSR, you're gonna need to add these wires too. We don't strictly need to do that. We're gonna be running a P28, and honestly, we could get away just with the O2 heater wire and also with the uh, VTEC solenoid wire. Uh, but I decided to go ahead and run all four of them just so I can show you how to work them just in case you live in an area with fairly strict emissions. So the next thing I need to do, they've been pulled through, I need to trim them down to fit and uh, uh, plug them in. Oh, something interesting. Uh, I actually didn't have the proper colors. Uh, we have a red-blue wire, which is your uh, knock sensor. Uh, we have a blue-black wire, which is the uh, VTEC oil pressure. And we have an orange wire with a black stripe. That's the heater control. And I did actually have the green with the yellow stripe. That's something I use when I do case swap harnesses. Uh, in order to get them properly colored, and again, I like them properly colored, so if you ever have to troubleshoot, I actually striped them myself. Uh, we have a little technique where we use a paint pen. The paint pen does a really nice job of uh, striping the wire. And uh, basically, we just run it, the wire through a groove and use a paint pen on the wire in order to stripe it. And it turns out really nice. So putting the wires into the individual connectors, a uh, couple things you can do here. Uh, there is a... Um, uh, available from Honda, the, uh, the actual terminals. Uh, the part numbers are on the bags here that I'm showing you. And uh, the large ones go in the A plug, which is kind of the clear plug, and the small ones go in the B and C plug. Now normally what we would do is we would take the two wires from C1 and C2, move them over to B10 and B12, and then take our two new wires and put them in C1 and C2. Now, I'm not going to do that, and here's why. What I've noticed is this Honda pin tool, which is used for extracting the two pins from C1 and C2, is ridiculously expensive now. If you don't have one, you're not going to get it out. It's got a very specialized tip on the end of it. When you push it into the connector, it uh, actually pops the terminal out the back side of the connector, uh, and that allows you to depin. Uh, I think I saw them available for like $106. So we're just going to do this the easy way. Uh, it's going to go against my grain to put the wrong color wires in particular positions, but we're going to go ahead and do that anyway. So we are going to take our two wires, put them in B10 and B12. Um, I'm going to have to look up real quickly which go one goes where. Uh, but these terminals are kind of tricky as well. They have a lock in them that you have to pry both the tabs up to slide the lock out in order to be able to put a new terminal in or take the old one out. Uh, it seems to me I'm forever prying up one side and then when I go to pry up the other side, the first side pops back in. Uh, I actually used to have a special pair of pliers that would do both of them at the same time, which I don't anymore. Uh, actually, it might be at work. I don't think I threw it away. Anyway, uh, I'm not at work, so I'm not going to worry about that. I'm going to take the clip out, figure out the right place to put the two pins, and get those in. And we are done with the wiring on this end of the car for now.
have another set of uh, crimpers that I use for doing ECU pins and this uh, is for non-insulated pins so it does a double crimp it does a roll crimp, crimp on the front and the rear so this uh, uh, what do they call this uh, this jaw uh, this die has uh, kind of dual size so it not only roll crimps on the wire it roll crimps on the uh, insulation so you use, wind up using on the smaller pin the second one and you, on the bigger pin the third one the big bigger pins a little bit tight with that but it works rather well these again are from iwis uh, the part number is sn-28b and uh, they do a great job on k-series ecu pins as well uh, by the way all the tools i'm using i'll go ahead and put a link in the show notes down below so that you can uh, purchase a set if you want to also they're pretty reasonable uh, i believe i paid about 30 32 bucks or something like that far less expensive than that honda pen tool the car is now wired for our obd1 port injection so we need to wire the harness for the engine now the engine harnesses for the dx's are unique depending upon the year 88 uh, DX harnesses are by themselves, 89 DX harnesses are by themselves, and then 90, 91 DX harnesses are basically uh, combined but separate from the 88, 89. Uh, and not only the DX but also the standard model. That's the one that uh, is, I believe, a DX in Canada, and in the US it's uh, called a base model. It's a four speed transmission. So those harnesses are unique pretty much to the year. So we need to make sure that we use the one that came out of the car. I have the 88 um, Civic Harness that came out of the car. So the first thing we need to do with this is we need to completely strip it of all the uh, loom. Uh, two reasons, uh, we wanna clean it up, uh, but also we have to uh, pull apart the injectors here. We have uh, the uh, primary and secondary injector here. Those have been converted. Uh, the yellow wire is now injector four, the red wire is now injector two. Uh, of course, I'm going to have to add uh, another couple of injectors. Uh, TPS is in the wrong place. Um, and then, uh, of course, our distributor uh, only has five wires. And our new distributor, although the main distributor has five wires, there's an additional two wires that come here forward to the uh, top dead center sensor. <laughs> what I'm gonna probably do is, uh, uh, I don't know, we'll see. Uh, I could run a separate set of wires with a small two pin plug, or I could run it into a six pin plug and then uh, divide it up there, which is what I'll probably do since in the future I'm gonna converted to OBD1 and I want to have the wiring kind of preset up for that. Uh, anyway, uh, number one job is uh, to grab a beer and a knife and start uh, taking this apart. Okay, the wire harness is stripped down about as far as I need it to be stripped down. Notice there's a lot of oil and gunk in this thing. This car had uh, numerous oil leaks and uh, the harness shows the wear and tear from it. Also, uh, some of the gray uh, tape was super baked on. I'm not sure why Honda used that stuff. It didn't seem to last or be as supple as the black, the black tape was. Uh, who knows, maybe it had some other quality like heat resistance or something. Anyway, um, my beer is about half gone and it's getting late. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and call it a night. Uh, tomorrow we're gonna have to clean this harness up as good as we can. And then we're gonna start fitting it on our motor, getting everything going in the direction it needs to be, start connecting the stuff that needs to be connected, and then we'll start taping it back up again.
the harness is stripped and clean. The next step, of course, is to install it on the engine. I need to check a bunch of links and things like that. Uh, everything is connected with exception of this right here, uh, which is the tandem control solenoid valve, not used on this particular engine. Uh, and also the uh, primary and secondary injector wiring, which we're going to turn into injectors two and four. Um, I've got it all routed where I want to have it, and some of the stuff is too short, some of the stuff too long. So I'm going to wind up probably lengthening this wire, and most of the stuff that's too uh, long, I'll just probably double it back on itself and then tape it all down in the harness rather than taking the time to uh, shorten it and uh, crimp on new terminals. I just think that's probably kind of a waste of time. The sizing of the harness, uh, you need to kind of decide where you're going to route stuff. Uh, but this is uh, actually the easy part. The next part's the fun part, adding in the wires. Okay, I took the plug that we're gonna be using on the shock tower and I went ahead and loaded the four wires that we're converting over to. I have my two injector wires for one and three and I have the two wires for the number one cylinder sensor. Now, um, I went ahead and taped them up, uh, tried them on the car to make sure the length was correct and taped it in the harness. And now what I'm gonna do is just lay these wires along here. Now on the injector wires, going to do the same thing. We're going to go ahead and bring it down, come out to where our other wiring was for injectors, which is way the heck over here. Uh, now what, what I noticed was, or what I think I'm going to do, is I think I'm going to come back across with the injector wires and come up through the middle of the intake manifold, kind of a uh, kind of a semi-tuck looking thing. Uh, so I'm going to make sure that I have lots of extra wire to do that. The wire's pretty cheap. I'll cut those off, and now I have all four of my injector wires laid in there. Next step: let's go ahead and tape the harness up a little bit more firmly. Uh, I'm going to have to strip out this area too because I'm going to wind up running my uh, Number one cylinder sensor wires inside of this this loom. Uh, I had forgotten about that. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at all these connections here. A lot of these are pretty brittle. Uh, this car is, you know, pretty old, 1988. Um, in fact, probably older than a lot of you people watching this. Uh, and uh, I need to make sure that it's not crispy. So I'm probably going to go back and repair anything that I find that is a little too crunchy. Uh, that's not too bad. That definitely is. This uh, oil pressure sending unit, that is just absolutely brittle. And this is the uh, insulator around the uh, oil uh, pressure light. So I'll probably replace that too. By the way, Honda used this up until, gosh, probably 2007. So uh, you can usually find nicer ones on some of the newer harnesses. Uh, Whatever you do though, don't cut up an RSX harness to do that. Uh, so anyway, uh, I'm going to uh, look through my box of plugs, see if I can't find some better stuff, and uh, replace those too. We've run our wires from the uh, right hand shock tower over to where I think they need to be for the number one cylinder sensor. So that's done. The only thing left is to choose the final length when we try it back on the engine again. So I'm going to turn my attention over to the other side. Uh, this is the driver's side shock tower. And if you notice here, I've peeled back a bunch of the wires already. Uh, we have uh, this black yellow wire, which was uh, uh, power for the tandem control solenoid valve, the orange wire, which is a control wire for the tandem control solenoid wire, and then these two 
uh, power wires for our primary and secondary injector. If you notice, one of the wires is thicker than the other one. Uh, we're going to go ahead and leave that one in there, but we're going to depin these other three wires and get them out of there. We're going to leave the thick one in because that's actually going to be the power for our new set of injectors. So the way it works typically is uh, on the OBD0 car is there's a single power wire. It actually goes to a resistor box and the resistor box then distributes the power to each one of the injectors. The resistor box is there because of the type of injectors that are being used. They need to have a resistor, otherwise too much current would flow through the computer and it would uh, cause the computer to short out. So depending on what injectors you're running, you may want the injector resistor box in there, but regardless, just one wire powers all the injectors. Now we did leave our red and yellow wires through the harness. These are going to be our injector wires. Well, after uh, trying the uh, harness on one more time onto the engine, looks like I'm going to need to uh, lengthen our yellow and red wire uh, to bring them over to where I want to come out with the other injector wires. They don't need to be quite this long, but they do need to be longer enough so they don't reach. On a lot of occasions, what I've done simply when doing this conversion was just find an SI harness or a 9091 Integra harness and basically just strip out the uh, injector plugs uh, all the way over to the shock tower on that and then splice that in. Uh, you do have to run the two injectors back over to the other side because that's the way we came in. But uh, I have on numerous occasions just, just basically chopped that part of the harness out and uh, modified it in order to work on the car. Uh, this time around, I think I'm going to do something a little bit more custom because I want to try to, you know, clean up the wiring a little bit uh, rather than just kind of hacking another wiring into it. But uh, that's an option for you and it's actually a much easier way to go about it because those, uh, the Integra ones are slightly long, but the, uh, if you can find a Civic SI from, you know, 88 to 91, those are actually the right length. So they just drop right in there. Again, the only thing you have to do is take the two injector wires and run them back over to the other side. Make sure you grab the injector resistor box if you're in there grabbing something like that. The one for the 90 Integra, 9091 Integra will work. The ones for the uh, 90 to 93 Accords will work. Uh, and uh, of course the 88 to 91 SI ones will work. Uh, they actually fit in best because of their metal bracket. They, they tuck in there real nice. Uh, I have one that I found. It's actually damaged. I'll go ahead and repair it. Uh, but uh, next step is to uh, lengthen this and start looming up my harness so that I can just uh, finish the injectors themselves. Oops, well, actually more than that. I need to find uh, my uh, uh, injector power wires and put those in as well, uh, as, long, as well as lengthen these. Well, everything's been fitted, taped, and I think I feel pretty good about the way it all fits. Uh, the only thing I wasn't able to do this evening was uh, I should actually say this weekend, this was a couple day project. <laughs> this is the funny thing about YouTube. Uh, literally, this job would have been taking me probably, I don't know, three and a half, four hours to do. Uh, but because I'm trying to film it as well, it took for freaking ever. Uh, probably looking at about eight and a half, nine hours total over the last few days. But anyway, um, I have all the wires where I think they should be. The only thing I wasn't able to do was put in the injector plugs. Uh, it turns out I don't have uh, any uh, terminals, Honda terminals. I thought I did, I was gonna use the stock injector plugs. So I went online, found something I think is gonna work from course of Technic. We'll see if it does, uh, but that'll be in the later episode. Uh, anyway, uh, the harness is, I think, well fitted. Uh, I've got all the wires going where they should. So the only thing I have to do is tape it up and loom it. So uh, once I do that, that will conclude this particular episode, which uh, was basically about wiring. Uh, the next episode is gonna be about cleaning this unreal filthy engine. This thing is just ugly. Uh, I actually recently put out a, uh, a post on Facebook asking for suggestions on what to do for um, cleaning. There was a bunch of different uh, uh, suggestions for different uh, uh, block uh, uh, degreasers and stuff like that. The one I thought was most interesting though 
uh, was from the owner of Science of Speed. They do a lot of NSXs and S2000s. Uh, more on that in the next episode. Anyway, guys, thanks a lot for clicking on us. And uh, I appreciate you checking us out. Please, if you have a chance, uh, head on over to VTech Academy's website and check out the uh, cool shirts we have. Uh, also, uh, there's going to be a link down in the show notes for some of the uh, products that I used here, uh, some of the crimpers and things like that. So uh, if you use those links to purchase those things, a little bit of money goes actually back to VTech Academy that will actually help us buy more supplies for our project cards. We'll see you later.